Hello and welcome to the Morning Skate Podcast. I am Matt Moody, joined by DJ Mitchell, here to go through DJ's 10-leg MLB bet of the day. DJ, what do you got for us? Uh, all, all of the baseball no, players. No, is that not where we're going? Okay. <laughs> okay. I just, I just, just because I just once in a while. Start this pod. Okay, fine. Uh, all right. I try to tell you about a random bet I tail that gets there in, in the, not literally, not 10 legs. Okay. We're going to move on. Um, no, just excited <laughs> to be back, uh, back, back to betting baseball and tilting when I have no idea what I'm doing. And like, I literally just click the button now because I, I don't even want to know what I'm doing in baseball because the moment I think I know what I'm doing, I don't and I lose money. So I'm just clicking buttons now. I love it. Yes. Best time of the year. Clicking clicking buttons, losing money rather than thinking and losing money. Just can't beat it. Uh, but no, uh, we're here to talk about the NHL Keyboard. DFS uh, sleep for, yeah, for Tuesday, April 2nd. Um, yeah, we're, we're just sort of grinding out this week. They've got really good slates. Unfortunately, not very good contests because, you know, of the aforementioned baseball uh, soaking up the lobby. But make sure you reserve your entries early because they sized this eight-game slate identical to Monday's eight-game slate, um, which, you know, people tend to associate Tuesdays with hockey days. So just, just make sure you're getting in there um, if you were looking to join any particular contest because it might fill early. It might not, but um, Monday filled, I imagine Tuesday will, again, pretty early. So, uh, yeah, eight games on the docket, three teams on a back-to-back. I don't know, anything to talk about our weekends? Um, I can't think of anything worthwhile for me to discuss, but anything on your end? No, not really, actually. I, it was a very mid-betting weekend. I think, yeah, no, nothing really happened. Uh, college hockey was amazing. That That's probably the one thing that was actually, like, good. It was truly, in every capacity, the best it could have possibly been, and absolutely nobody watched it. So does it make a sound? Yeah. Um, I checked out NBA League Pass for the first time ever, and it was really cool. You can, like, you know on ESPN Plus, you watch all the stupid ads and, like, you know, whopper, 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 like just, just, you know, shit like that. Um, on the NBA league pass, you literally just watch, uh, like the in arena shit. So I watched a guy in the Knicks game win a trip to Vegas because he dribbled through some cones and made a free throw or whatever. You just get to watch that. Like it was so cool. There's no ads or anything. Well, I mean, obviously Caesars sponsored that. So this trip to Vegas was sponsored by Caesars. So like, you know, there's ads, but it's at least more fun than the same commercial 19,000 times in a row. Like yeah. you get on ESPN plus. So, um, yeah, just found that interesting, yeah. but yeah, yeah I, that very... I legitimately think I could. So yeah, if, if you don't watch ESPN plus a lot, they did get rid of the incredibly annoying, like live sports, ESPN coverage yeah. of their, and it's elevated music, but they play the same five commercials the entire time. Like it was mm-hmm. one horror movie that I'm absolutely not going to see like two drug companies and oh my God, there was an, uh, just, you know, what's I, funny. Honestly, I feel like my brain just melted. Yeah, no, and you know what's really funny? I cannot I cannot think of a single commercial on ESPN Plus, but if you started it, I would just be able to like mindlessly recite Recited. the entire, you know, the entire 30 seconds. But I cannot think of a single ad that I've seen on ESPN Plus right now. I get it. I mean, there, there is one for the NHL playoffs, and it's like, oh, cool. And then like the 90th time I'm like, I'm I don't want to watch the playoffs anymore. They found a way <laughs> to ruin the NHL playoffs for me. Yeah. I just, yeah, um, it's, it's agonizing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, well, well, speaking of that, did you see, uh, Elliot said that there's possibility that it moves to a play in seven to 10. I got, I mean, I got one person hating on me on Twitter for saying it was a good idea, but I, I actually feel like that's kind of interesting piece of news to talk about with eight games here before we get into things. Uh, yeah. Did you see you what, what I'm talking quote, about? Do you, you know what he quoted? Yeah. Yeah. I listened no. to 32 thoughts today and he said, wait, what? You didn't listen to it, right? No. You're saying you just heard it? Okay. He said right. that the reason, like part of the reason for this is that Buffalo hasn't made the playoffs in, you know, 13 years and Detroit's a market they really need to thrive and it's not. And I'm just sitting there like, ah, ah cool. Yeah. We got to find a way to get Buffalo in the playoffs. That'll really knock everything out of the park. We're right back on track. Yeah. They're, they're, they're just right. Buffalo in the playoffs away from having the most popular sport in America. It's, I mean, yeah, it's really lacking. Uh, no one circles the wagons uh, like me. Okay, yeah, we have eight games. Um, let's no, talk so about sorry, fun sorry. stuff. So uh, Buffalo, on a glance, first game up. 
DJ, DJ, on a glance, do you like it or not? I don't need to know what why Elliot thinks. It's because I think it's an awesome idea. I think that's exactly uh, what the NHL should do. I, I mean, care. if they're going to okay. do like, I just want it to be. I want it to be fun. I want it to be playing games. I want it to be like one game, like all everything on the line. Yeah. Like, if that's what I want, I, I would be down with that. Yeah. So yes, I would. So you know that. how the NBA sure. works. Well, I mean, let me explain how the NBA works. I'm guessing not every listener knows how the NBA works, but I think the way that they would do it if they're copying the NBA, like Elliot seems to suggest, is uh, these top six teams in each conference automatically qualify. I'm guessing no more of this stupid bullshit where the top three in each division are locked in and there's two wild cards. My guess it's just top six per conference. And then the next four teams, seed seven through ten, play each other in a series of play-in games. Team seven and eight, they play one another. The winner makes the playoffs as the seven seed. The ten and or the nine and ten teams play each other. The winner moves on to play the loser of the seven eight seed game for that eighth seed. Um, so what it does is it not only makes you know basically right now the, the NHL is over. If you don't care about one of the four teams competing for one of the Eastern playoff spots, or you don't care about the Art Ross Trophy being contested between uh, McDavid, McKinnon, and Kucherov, who are you know pretty close to tied in points. So that's really, there's nothing else to play for that. The matchups, who cares? It's just a little bit of home ice advantage, you know, but you're, you're even dealing with some adverse uh, incentives. If, if the Rangers fall off a cliff, you know, it might be worthwhile for the second number one seed in the East to become the two seed in the Metro because like Philly is a far worse team than the uh, Tampa is almost certainly going to be the number one wild card that they would face. So like there's these perverse incentives because of the stupid structure we currently have and nothing matters. But in this new system, teams one and two, they get to play the shitty wild card teams, which could even be the 10th best team in their conference. That's a pretty big advantage. I would say teams three through six, well, they avoid the plan. I mean, team six, holy shit, you got to get on that plan. You got to get from the seven seed to the six seed. Right now, Tampa has nothing to play for. I mean, yeah, sure, they're, they're still trying because Kucherov, but, like, they just scratch brain point out of nowhere on a Sunday. Like, that's not happening if this play-in system is, you know, introduced. Um, and not only that, then these teams out in the West, like Minnesota and St. Louis, aren't completely dead in the water. And, you know, that's fine. If you want to say they didn't earn it, fine. But it adds so much incentive to the entire league to win hockey games that, like, it's a no-brainer to me, like, Basically, instead of Vegas yeah. being able to say, like some people are claiming, oh, well, we'll just send Mark Stone to the Shadow Realm for a few weeks and trade for everyone and then bring him back magically. I think that's all bullshit. But if you were one of those people who think that, well, this system has your name written on it because it actually incentivizes increasing your seed. Um, so, like, it, it just makes perfect sense to me. I feel like it solves a lot of the issues that we currently have with the dog days of April um, in the NHL. But yeah, I mean, people are going to be mad because yeah. people are mad. But I, I wanted to talk about that because that's like I, genuinely, yeah. I think, interesting. My, my frustration really is just that the NHL is always the last league to adopt something and never makes it even unique or interesting. They just carbon copy it. And there's no buzz around it now because the NBA does it. Baseball does it. And now the NHL is going to follow suit years later. And it's like, well, all the allure is gone. Like, I mean, NHL fans are going to watch, but you're not bringing in new fans because of it. And like, that's why I'm sitting here like, is there something different they can do that's going to bring in fans? Probably not. Like, it, that's like why I get frustrated. I mean, do it, right? I mean, it's going to help. It goes well in every sport. And everyone ends up liking it. It takes time. And some of these changes are uh, uncomfortable sounding, but like I said, I think the NBA is going to love it. They love the play-in tournament. I don't think you have to do everything that basketball does but there's a reason why that sport continues to grow and attract new fans and people want to check stuff out and gain buzz and people in the media i mean why do people watch march madness over the frozen four everyone's watching march madness no one's watching the frozen four there's really no reason and the games were incredible no one watched uh, i'm just sick of the sport continuously never ever being first to the punch at a good idea and even if you think it's a bad idea just trying something um so yeah, well, it's a good idea. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing they'll do it. But So not only at the same time, though, you mix in the goal plan for drafting, and all of a sudden yeah, I mean, every 100%. single team desperately wants to win all season long. It's like, you know, maybe not all season long because if you're tanking, whatever. But, like, as soon as the trade deadline hits, yeah. oh, shit, now it's time to get that number one pick. It's time to improve your playoff seed. It's time to make the playoff, the play-ins. Like, yeah, like, just do both those things at the same time. There's your idea of getting a little bit creative. and 
also incentivizing every single team in the league to constantly go for the win, which, you know, as, uh, as we've seen, like, uh, there's not enough of that in the NHL nowadays. So anyway, we do have 10 games or sorry, eight games to get to on, uh, on Tuesday. So, uh, thank you for actually, uh, discussing that with me because I know that I'm yelling at you all the time to get things going, but, um, I think we can move through these games pretty quickly. It's, it's a rather inspiring slate. Okay, yeah. I, I yeah, kind of like uh, what we did last time more. You do the read, and then I jump in when we we'll do game by game with the betting odds. I think it flows better. Sure. Uh, so, so just very quickly to read, sort of actually what we have on the docket because it does kind of inform what I'm about to say, and that we're really lacking a lot of the high end studs that we have from Monday slate, and those studs all being in really good matchups as well. Uh, we have Washington at Buffalo, Florida at Montreal. Uh, Florida on a back-to-back, Pittsburgh on a road back-to-back at New Jersey, Chicago at the Islanders, Islanders on a back-to-back, uh, Ottawa at Minnesota, Brian Hartman suspended, Boston at Nashville, Anaheim at Calgary, and Vancouver at Vegas in the nightcap. Um, so yeah, as you sort of can glean if you're listening to me through those games, we basically have Pasternak, Kaprizov, and nobody above 8,500 on the slate. So it's going to be a very uh, interesting build relative to um monday where mckinnon at 10.3 was 50 percent owned on an eight game slate um so in any case though this dfs podcast is brought to you by the DraftKings sportsbook of course we know hockey games move fast both DraftKings sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the nhl you can score faster than anything happening on the ice this week new customers can bet five bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code THPN. New customers bet just 5 bucks on the NHL and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, code THPN. The crown is yours. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 878-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available from problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus, aid varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. NHL and the NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Okay. Uh, and yes, if you have someone in your life who does not have a DraftKings account, you know, you probably do as the fine listener of this show. Um, make sure you have a uh, you know, make sure you have them sign up using that code to support the show. DJ, anything you want to say off the top here? Nope. Let's jump right into the biggest game of the night. The, I mean, the Washington One more thing. versus the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, I, I just remembered MSP Madness uh, day two is Tuesday. So I will tag you in the discord. So don't worry. There's only 12 okay. of you who it applies to. I guess 10 of you because you and me and 10 other people. Um, but just very quickly, uh, day one, uh, guy, guy. 2626 two, six, beat out Mike Berg uh, by a 40. Uh, Jason B. Nolt, you know, uh, Crusher Matt in the Discord uh, by 50. Uh, Clary loses a tight one to Smack uh, 105 to 103. Very funny. Um, Mac D Man puts a 150, beats out Wu Wei. Uh, Wu Wei, not sure. Uh, I like kitties by 50. I lose by 25 to Wookie, and you lose to Hunter by 10. Everyone advances to day two. It's a double elimination format. So to stay alive, DJ and I are playing each other in a head-to-head. Uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, Clary gets I Like Kitties. Nice. Mike gets Matt um, in a true crusher matchup in the bottom bracket. And then uh, uh, Guy Guy gets Jason. Um, Smack gets Mac D Man. And Wookie gets Hunter. So, yeah, there you go. Um, just very quick head-to-heads again on Tuesday and we will tune back in for Thursday's three man groups. And I talked about this last pod. It's all in the discord. If you want to check it out. Um, but just a simple March madness, MSP madness type bracket event. Okay. Now I think we're good to go. Washington travels to Buffalo to take on the Buffalo Sabres. I was a bit shocked when I saw the minus minus one thirty five next to the Sabres on one hand, Jeff Skinner plays his, uh, thousand game a, a word i cannot say for some reason and i tried to say it before the podcast and i still you only playing is game number 1000 there you go i don't know why that word will not come out of my mouth washington is i mean still just feels like a must win type of scenario for them even though they're up just a little bit in the standings we'll see after monday night how much 
that actually ends up holding. Um, but again, minus 135 on the Sabres, six and a half plus 110. There's some interesting notes here. Well, I'll just kind of take a thin on the Sabres if you want, but uh, overall, as you're kind of showing, it does look like a pretty favorable matchup for Washington. And I do think that in DFS, we, we have to discuss a bit of them. Um, so Buffalo, not the best matchup. I don't think they'll be super popular, but again, it is a decently high total for them. Without Greenway, who's expected to miss, it was still Paterka, Thompson, Tuck. All of them power play one correlated with Dahlin and Benson. Interestingly enough, Benson on that top power play. Benson's playing with Cousins and Quinn and Skinner with Krebs, Rosick. I mean, the rest don't really matter. Um, power, Byram, Cousins, Skinner, and Quinn on that second unit. But that does mean that the top line is all together. It has exploded a couple times on a couple slates in a row. Paterka has been three slates in a row with five plus shots on goal two goals in as many or two goals in those games and also what five in his last five. So at 4,300, he does feel like a decent option for sure. Uh, that line isn't very expensive, but it's a bad matchup. So anything on the Sabres as we enter into this slate? Um, yeah, they're kind of interesting mostly because Paterka um, sort of stands out just given, uh, given his role and, you know, whatever else um, that recent play, but I don't know. Everyone else kind of feels a bit expensive. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think I'm more interested in the Washington side of things, in all honesty, um, which I know we, yeah. you know, the expected goals also agree with that. But Buffalo has really flatlined defensively. I mean, I've not seen a number this poor for them as far as 10 game samples go. Um, but that is one of the worst marks in the NHL, actually. Let me see yeah. if that is the worst mark in the NHL. Um, but yeah, it, it's really poor as of late. And the, nope, that is actual goals. Whatever, who cares? Um, yeah, goaltending can't save them forever. And clearly we're seeing a bit of that uh, mm -hmm. play out. So uh, anything news wise from the Capitals? I know TJ Yoshi missed practice, but that was due to maintenance. Um, yeah. Anything else of note? I don't think so. I didn't see anything at practice. I mean, last game, okay. if, if, you know, I actually was like, I watched a good bit of the end and all of overtime of the shootout against Boston, just a bit of a heartbreaker for the Capitals who ends up getting like, a, a, you know, the power play in overtime with a chance to win it. Ovi stays out through the entire time, but which is the note there is really that it was Ovi Carlson and Strom that st stayed out there for the whole time. Uh, Carlson saw 30 minutes, Strom saw 22. And I know that he's not playing with Ovechkin, but he was in the third period quite a bit, just because I think they've realized that that is their best player. Um, well, they're at center by, by a decent margin over McMichael, LaPierre, and Dowd. I, I just wouldn't be too tethered to whatever their lineup is. Like, I don't think you need to go overboard on the Capitals. There's four players to discuss here. I've discussed three of them. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, as you mentioned, I think Oshie's in play, but Milano did get 19 minutes. I mean, the skill, all the skill in the world, 2,900. The rates are pretty porous. I mean, he has 1.5 fantasy points in the last two games, albeit one of them he saw two minutes. It's a bit risky. Um, nothing feels well put together here. Uh, so I find myself not wanting to play it at all. It's like the Sabres are yeah. really well put together. It makes a lot of sense. Tangible, bad matchup. On the other side, Ovi Carlson, move on, or I don't know. Yeah, I mean... The, the Sabres are definitely a top line only type situation to me, though I guess value considered like Benson, maybe if you squint. I mean, two, 22 shot attempts in 10 games is, is pretty brutal. He's not really shown anything in his NHL career to this point that makes him seem DFS relevant. Um, but, you know, we, we play Mark Stone all the time and he's sort of of a similar mold. That's like their, you know, end goal for him to be like their Mark Stone. Um, so, all that to say, Top power play Benson, I guess, is in play. On the Washington side, I think you're right. I would argue that it's Ovi and Strom and then uh, maybe Carlson. Yeah. But honestly, Strom has been playing so much and playing so well. I know the shot volume won't be there, but if Ovi hits, I really struggle to see how Dylan Strom doesn't get 14 for his, you know, 4.9 salary tag. Um, so I think that's sort of my shining light here uh you go through strom's game logs and he's very hit or miss and that's sort of what i like about it um in that you know you're fine eating a floor of zero at 4900 at center like that happens but if ov hits 
it does feel like Strom has 25, 30 point upside. Um, and that's what I really want to chase after here. So um, even if they're not on yeah, the same line at five what, on yeah. five, which we're not expecting, um, that's sort of the two guys that I'm most interested on Washington, just because there's a number of defensemen that I like and 6,300 for Carlson doesn't really excite me in any tangible way. Yeah, I feel like there should be a, an award like the sixth man of the year for a guy like Dylan Strom. But I know it's obviously there's just no comparison, <laughs> but like he's been unbelievable. Like, like the guy that just gets the most, like the least amount of respect, but let's, let's put it in the other way. Uh, just he's yeah. been everything. He's their best center by such a substantial margin. And 25 goals is nothing to scoff at, especially for a guy we I never thought would see that number. So um, I do want to just say that's a great play. And it feels like Paderka is going to get all the ownership. No one's going to go to Strom here because of the lineup. And he's just frankly going to yeah. play with all of the best wingers because up here plays 12 minutes. Uh, you know, so yeah, but we can, we can move on. It's, I mean, I don't think I'm going to really go there, but that, that is the note. I think it's those three, but Turk is fine yeah. as a one-off, but um, I think it'll be popular. Back to back Florida at Montreal. Are you ready? Yes. Um, so moving on to Florida and Montreal, uh, we note the same sort of conundrum that we've run into a few times over the last week or so, in that Florida's play is really kind of flatlined from an underlying standpoint. Um, it's really hard to know what to make that out to uh, because their results aren't terrible. Like, they're, they're certainly not like rampaging over the league like they uh you know were in the middle of the season but they're also not like bad um so i think this game profiles more as a stay away than anything else like i'm just a little worried that even though i don't think montreal gets super owned like is there really a reason to target what i think could be a decently owned like line one there just because of the back to back i imagine it'll be a six and a half i don't think montreal will be like mega dogs here so i think they're live that a pretty good team total for them and i'm just not sure that this sludge type matchup is one that i really want to eat a ton of ownership on especially because you know cole caulfield doesn't even make this list he's been a staple on here for a good while um on the expected fantasy point list why did he disappear i don't know that's a question for tomorrow to sort of dig into um, but really when you're talking about like the mid tier, I think there's other stacks I like more. Um, and then from the Florida standpoint, you certainly can go here. Um, we're going to like their top line, assuming it sticks with Barkov, Reinhardt and Verhage. It's just a matter of, I think I respect Montreal more than the field does. And if so, then why am I sort of taking what could be a 10, 15% on top line, um, in Florida, that's fairly expensive, especially considering the slate around it doesn't have those super high end, uh, players that we need to stack into either so i'm a little worried florida gets a bunch of ownership here and i don't really love it so what are your thoughts yeah i just cole caulfield 20 goals on the year if you would have told me he's gonna have less than dylan strom when we started i would have been shocked i mean eventually yeah. that shooting percentage is gonna come up it just isn't right now and his price is continuing to go up um you know, it was 6,200 a week ago. It's 6,800 here in a bad matchup. I, I don't really see why you go to Montreal. I don't think they'll be very popular. I didn't mention it yet, but it's a it's a five and a half minus 135 on the over. I, I almost Wait, like, really? I'm not saying I like the under here, but that five and a half. Yeah. I mean, Vegas wow. definitely doesn't think it's going to be very exciting. Minus 225 okay. on the away Panthers. And you might be thinking, dang, is that the lowest total? No, that's the third lowest total of eight. So, not a lot of games with huh. huge totals on this slate. Uh, we just talked about tied for first on the highest total savers and capitals. And it kind of goes to speak to how you started this by saying there's not a lot of star power here. And Vegas is certainly assuming that dead teams are going to play dead and live teams are going to get up and sit on it. And there's not a lot of star power to begin with. So this game is not, I, I, I again, I love that, that Verhage Barkoff Reinhardt idea in my head here, but I think I'm just going to stay away just because number one, I think I like Washington a little bit more. Um, and I can even bring it back with a little bit of Buffalo and, a, you know, again, a decently high total. And especially well, when Washington trails, I mean, Strom and OVC even more time than they already, you know, you would imagine. Uh, Carlson, 30 minutes, like I mentioned, uh, you know, John, that is. I don't know if this game is just as, as interesting. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a reason Cole Caulfield's under 10% shooting and it's, it just frankly, maybe he is not quite there yet and needs to get a bit more strength under his belt because I don't know, not scoring. Well, I mean, Nick Suzuki stole all the goals, I think is the story of this season. Nick Suzuki's at 30, pretty crazy. Um, but 
Yeah, if this game stays at a five and a half, I got to say, I'm guessing I actually might like Florida more than the field does because that feels a bit crazy to me. Um, so I'm keeping a close yeah. eye on that. If the, you know, basically if you load up your favorite optimizer and they're showing you that this, you know, these two teams total up to a five and a half, then I imagine the projected points and the projected ownership that follows from that will be a good bit lower than sort of what my initial sense was. Um, and so if that holds, then I think you very well could just stack Barkov for Hagee Reinhardt and just say, yep, these are three alphas. Again, you're not sacrificing a ton on the slate as far as, uh, you know, there's no McKinnon like volume uh, hoarder. And I mean, Pasternak's fine, but like in Nashville is one of the most difficult matchups all of a sudden. Um, so like, yeah, it's not anything mm -hmm. that you should feel bad about spending up for. So I guess let me revise that to say Florida one very much in play. Um, I'm interested to see how Florida three fares as well. Um, again, Florida team or Montreal teams, uh, I like to get the depth against them and Florida three with uh, Lindell, Lusterainen and Tarasenko is God. 50, 65, I mean, it's almost 10, 11K maybe. Uh, very inexpensive. You can get a good line stack and could two good defensemen with it. Um, and I think that line has you know a decent chance of getting like two goals here against just the non-existent uh, Montreal middle six if Christian Dvorak does not return. Worth noting, uh, he's possible to return. I don't think it'll be this week, but it could be. Um, and if he does, he's a candidate to play power play one at 2,500. So just keep an eye out for it. I imagine new hook stays there, but, um, you know, just, just another cook in the kitchen. If the are plays and they won, he'd be pretty cheap for you. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have here. Anything else before we move on? Uh, no, I mean, let's, let's get into it. I mean, if you're talking about two teams that are completely dead in the water, you're looking at a back-to-back -back penguins team against a New Jersey devils. At home, minus 162 for the Devils, the team that yeah, cannot get over how bad they've been. Uh, this is our highest total per Vegas, six and a half at plus 100. So just edging out the Sabres at plus 110 on that six and a half. So highest total, it might be one of the highest team totals. Maybe yeah, at least I think it might be, honestly. It's a pretty close, if not, on the Devils. Highly concentrated minutes, but this team is just awful. Um, and I hate the lineup. Kishir, Brat, Timo. Hughes, uh, how the Colts last game? I did retweet their lines, I did think they actually changed, so let me pull that up really quickly. But man, it's been I don't think there is a more disappointing team in hockey than New Jersey. And Buffalo is a close second, but boy, these got the cowards, uh, giant losers love to lose. And it's a good matchup. You think it gets owned? I don't mean, uh, yes, I definitely think New Jersey gets a lot of ownership. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a problem though, like. Um, because, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really scared to show this on, on camera, but, uh, Alex Holtz played 19, yeah, 18 minutes. This is, uh, yeah, Holtz. Yeah. And um, he's still there. It's, uh, Howla, Holtz and Hughes. Yeah. So yeah, that's very scary huh. for my bankroll. Um, obviously Jack Hughes is a really good play. You know, he's liable to bonus, triple yep. bonus in any game, really. I mean, just, well, maybe not triple, uh, shots, bonus points, bonus, you name it. He could certainly do it. Alex Holtz, 2,700. I mean, yeah, he didn't do anything last game, but just literally the entire season, just nothing. He's like leading the team in points per points per 60 ahead of even Jack Hughes. And then he finally plays 17 minutes and lays a stinker come on man like it just um but you do love yeah. to see it the usage is far more important than the production of course because i believe yeah. the production will follow um but yeah it looks like he's had a like five games this year with 18 or more uh, minutes so um this is certainly an, an yeah. uh, abnormality for him and therefore he's a great play i really don't care if he's that owned because yeah, you can just play both Hughes brothers. You can even play Keisher, Brat. You can do so many things with this team because of how Jack Hughes floats around the lineup. Um, and we've seen, you know, Alex Holtz produce unlimited minutes. You're not only drawing dead to him. Uh, you're not only drawing dead, drawing live to him playing 18 minutes. He's going to do a ton, even if asked to play 12 minutes in most cases. So I really like New Jersey here. Um, the expected goals index is hugely interested in both sides of this game um and i really see no reason to overrule yeah. it personally uh 
Also of note, Pittsburgh uh, loses Jari due to illness. We'll see if he's able to go on Tuesday, but this was planned to be a split back-to-back situation. Um, if we have a goalie playing back-to-back in Nedeljkovic, I mean, that's we know that's also a boon for goal scoring as well, as goalies tend to struggle in that situation. Yeah, I agree with everything you're saying. I think Colts is absolutely everything you'd want and more. Um, Luke Hughes, seven shot attempts per game over the last five. I've said this before. I've yeah. uh, tried it. I've gone to the well many a times. He is not a guarantee, but if you are stacking, he's only, what, 3,600? So yep. I don't really see any reason his- why you wouldn't play him as he does at least have two of his last five. Well, you know, he double bonus, he triple bonus against Washington five games ago. Like it's in his range yes. of outcomes here. So yeah, I no, and the Penguins shoot. Like I think this is kind of the thirty six. Yeah, darn it. I hate he's to say really, it. Really, my bankroll is yeah. starving. But yeah, here I go. <laughs> he's he is really showing out um, as of late. It just not not just the fantasy points, but he's playing oh. a ton. Um, he's truly looking the part of a number one defenseman of the future. Um, so yeah, that that's New Jersey's a no question, you know, no doubt about it. Even if they're 25% owned, like, I just don't care because I think there's so many ways you can stack them that like, you're pretty much having a unique build regardless. Um, so on the Pittsburgh yeah. front, uh, worth noting Latang should be on the top power play. We saw Crosby with or yeah, Crosby, Malkin, Latang sort of reunited as the core of that power play one, um, with, bunting and rust i believe it was um so a little you know first line second line two two guys from each of those lines um drew o'connor still in the top line at 3600 um you know played 21 minutes last game pittsburgh's also a really good play like um if you're gonna go into this late saying new jersey stinks i want pittsburgh you know at lower ownership i, I don't blame you for that at all um game stacking feels a little odd to me just because i'm not sure that this is like a seven to six type game but if you told me this game was six to one and one of the teams just played dead i'm not surprised about that at all so um i feel like pittsburgh i think i prefer crosby rust letang as a stack but you know you could also talk me into cheaper malkin stacks as well yeah no for sure i mean and, and honestly, it's funny like we just talked so much about holds and the hughes brothers and it's like Brett, Nico, and Timo are all power play correlated, five on five correlated. They're going to eat into a ton of ownership. So I don't know if anything here is going to be ultra owned outside of probably on, I think Luke Hughes gets quite a bit. That price is pretty juicy, the stack. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't think Pittsburgh gets much ownership. And this, this definitely is a game stack I'm interested in. And there's just so many options to do it. So yeah, I mean, get best game of the night. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. I like it. Ready to move on. Yeah, what the hell is Eric Howla doing on this list? Eleven point seven expected fantasy points per game over the last ten. Yeah. That, that makes no I mean, sense. What? Okay. Last game, yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He had eight shot attempts last game, I believe. That Come might on. help. Uh, he, I mean, he did. Well, they're like, they're like. I figured hey, out while. Hold up! <laughs> Don't shoot. We I figured out why they can't Hulla score. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, in New Jersey, don't do that. Okay, fixed. Yeah. Uh, what's next? Fixed. Uh, Islanders Chicago, Chicago. Yeah. Chicago against the back-to-back Islanders is a five and a half minus 120 for our lowest tight lowest total mm-hmm. on the slate. Um, minus two thirty on the Islanders. Their lines are abysmal. They are winning right now against Philly as we are recording. It's, you know, two to one after the first period. I just, part of me just wants to play Bedard. And um, part of me also doesn't want to play this game at all. Yeah, I would say all of me wants to play Bedard um, all the time. But uh, yeah. also, yes, this game is absolutely abysmal, as is as are all Islanders games. Um, now, two to one after one in the Flyers game. Sure, why not? You know, whatever. Go, go, go off. Um, the Islanders do not look good. Uh, none of their players are really showing out. We, we had Brock Nelson as a staple here. Barzell, Horvat, Dobson are all pretty regularly in the top 30 of players on each slate. Now on an eight-game slate, they're nowhere to be found. That's pretty representative of how this team has really fallen off uh, the last handful of games. Um, defensively, they sort of look fine, but like their goaltending's failed them. I mean, Sorokin's not been himself. Um and they're feeding him to the wolves here uh, against Mr. Connor Bedard. So 
Uh, but Dard feels too cheap at 7,200. That's just, like, ridiculous. He's been playing some amazing hockey offensively. Um, and that's what we're here for. We don't care about your defensive metrics on DraftKings.com. We only care, are you putting the puck in the net? And right now, he's a wing, uh, playing alongside Jason Dickinson, who has been their best play driver. Um, if that holds, I think it does, given they shellacked Philly over the weekend. Um, Bedard, 7,200, I think is an awesome play against a back-to-back Islanders team. That stinks. You know, there's a lot of these teams on the slate. That yeah. stinks. I agree with everything you're saying. I, it just it's just one of those things where once again I'm going to go to this well. I'm going to say I have outsmarted the field. No one's playing Connor Bedard, and he's going to put up 16. Then I'm still going to lose. Like I, I'm going to probably do it, but I, I know the outcome. He's putting up 16 points. I lose, and we move on. But I I love the play. Yeah, was it a Kurashev with them last game? Are you looking at it or? Yep, Kurish, yep, Kurishev, Dickinson, Bedard. I they did practice today. I'm almost hundred percent positive it stayed together, but if you give me 12 seconds, I'll find it. I mean, and, and all of that, not not Dickinson on the first power play last game. So, you know, I, I he's not necessary, is kind of the point I'm yeah. making here. Like if you want to play Kurishev, sure. If you want to play Seth Jones, I, I guess have at it, but yeah, in yeah, fairness, uh, Dickinson at 3700. Like, you know, he, he's certainly got the upside to pay off that. He's been more expensive for the last while because he went on a little bit of a bender, um, which, you know, for him is having like four goals in seven games or whatever. Um, but he's certainly cheap enough to where I'm not worried about that whatsoever. Um, if you just want to stack him with Bedard, because uh, we look at center, it's really gross out there. I mean, we talked about Eric Howla, like he's probably going to pull 15% ownership. He sure is going to be like 25 if you're really telling me Jason Dickinson's cut from a different cloth than that, as far as like his overall profile and range of outcomes, like I don't, I don't think that's true. Um, so yeah, there's not a ton to like, especially cheap at center. Um, so yeah, that's why I think Dickinson's fine. Let's go over to Ottawa, Minnesota though. Uh, big news out of Minnesota is Ryan Hartman suspended for three games for chucking his stick at a ref or direction of a ref um good for him that, that's great uh this does mean either marco rossi or who's Nitinov or both are stepping into a bit larger of roles you know maybe more safety in their role um is to say uh did we get lines out of practice today and was hard yes he was not suspended by then so i'm not sure if we would know um it was kaprizov erickson like boldly yeah, no, he was out there. He was Sucarello. Yeah, yeah. Facing suspension, and he was suspended. So, yeah, not sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this could mean Adam Beckman uh, on the second line. Um, it could mean Hustadinov up there on the second line. It, it could be more gross, like Johansson or Goudreau, um, second line. But there certainly is, you know, a home spot against Ottawa. Um, anytime you can get a value piece like that, reacting to news. I think is viable. Um, I will just throw my hat in the ring for Adam Beckman. If he gets into even the third line, like he's not a player who plays a ton of minutes, but he should profile as an NHL shooter. This is really only an MME type play. You're not betting on him for any sort of safety, um, but he's just one of those guys that I will continue to believe in until he's out of the league at age 24 and you know never to be seen again. But until then, uh, we continue to buy on Mr. Adam Beckman, and so we're keeping a huge eye on that given uh, the Hartman suspension news. Yeah. Um, with all of this also being said, you know, boldly Eric Sinek Kaprizov, five on five and power play. It was Chisholm on the first power play over the, you know, everyone's favorite pick to win the Calder Brock Faber just, you know, can't even hold the first power play. It makes it worse. So yeah, three K I mean, I'm not playing him, but again, just wanted to mention that if you were thinking, Ooh, Brock Faber is getting uh nice and pricey at five K. Do I play him? Uh, no, 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 you don't. Um, yeah. I don't have a lot of uh, interest so- in stacking because it's astronomic. Yeah, Joel Erickson Eck uh, is 8,000. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, like his second best game since the new year. I mean, this is a lot of hockey games we're talking about is 26.3. Sure, 
that's going to work. If you pay 8,000 for him and he gets 26 and you pay 7,200 for Boldy and he gets 25 and you pay 9.4 for Kaprizov and he gets 30, that's going to work. But that feels like the minimum. And again, Eric Sinek himself is on that once in the new year. I mean, that's at least 20 games, probably closer to 30 at this point. Um, just kind of crazy. I don't see how this stack makes any sense for me. Like, no. uh, money perspective you don't need the money to do a ton on the slate but like even then i just feel like living in the mid-range is far more uh or you know rewarding or tempting for me so uh chisholm is interesting maybe you do something like caprizov chisholm and just say like caprizov floats around um he'll yeah. play probably especially if someone like uh, beckman's in the top nine caprizov will double shift with the rossies and uh kuznodinovs of the world so like that could be a path that I uh, follow, but really not a ton interesting on this Minnesota team outside of like a one-off Kaprizov, which I'm perfectly fine with in all circumstances. Sure. I agree. Uh, Ottawa also plays. Um, I don't oh, yeah, they interest. do, don't they? Bathurst has been playing a ton, uh, five on five with Pinto and the Chuck in first power play without Pinto. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's Look at this guy. worse things in the world than 5,100 Drake Batherson. The rates haven't been fantastic, um, but he's top line, top power play, and they're winning games, so they're probably going to keep that going. Also on that top power play is Jacob Chikrin. Did we get Shabbat news? I believe he's still day-to-day, -day and I don't think we know, but he didn't play on Saturday, so keep an eye out for it. I, yeah, I, not, yeah. I think I'm just not going to play um, against Minnesota. I didn't mention it, but it is a – Six over under minus 122 on the over, and it's a plus 120 for this Ottawa team. Um, I don't really see them breaking the slate personally either, and it's kind of expensive. Yeah. Brady's 8100. I think you could probably do better. Both of these top lines seem like they'll draw into one another, and both top lines have been very good um, over the recent sample as far as their you know chances against suppression. So even though both these teams are kind of dead, I just. I can't see myself paying any 100 for Kachuk or AK for Eric Zanek or, you know, any, any of these other tertiary guys in the five to seven K range. Um, just not a ton here for me. Um, sure. But yeah, good note on Shabbat. That's always, uh, you know, Sanderson, Chikrin, just eat more minutes and more pucks when Shabbat's not there to play the tough minutes. Boston, Nashville, David Pasternak, boy, um, yeah, he's he's fairly good. I don't know. He's mm -hmm. not ninety seven hundred good on the road in Nashville. I don't think at the very least. You know, we saw McKinnon uh, eat Nashville alive, but really, that's been the only. I, I cannot. Let's, I mean, let's just see. Um, I don't even know if anyone had a good game for Vegas when they scored four. Um, otherwise, I can't think of the last time someone truly went off on this Nashville team. Um, you know, and Forsberg has been really uh, dominant in all facets. So I much prefer Forsberg to Pasternak here. Um, do you agree with me there? Are you interested in this Boston side at all? You know, I was actually just double checking, but you know, last game, like I said, it, uh, they they did get the win against Washington, and it was Marshan Zaka Pasternak again, all connected five on five and the power play, Great. which is at least something. Uh, I, I you have to consider it, but also not really loving this game. Um, Posture not get mispracticed at the maintenance day. So I guess we will, we, we know absolutely nothing. Um, I can yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's an ugly matchup, but there's at least a note here of, of like, huh? Like that sounds interesting. You have this correlation. Um, but yeah, I, I agree largely that I like Nashville more Forsberg 10 attempts per game over the last five Yosi, 8.2 attempts per game over the last five. I don't think you're finding anything better than that on this slate as far as upside, and it's not going to be owned. I haven't been attacking Boston very much. It is a plus 102 on Nashville at home, so a, a slight mm -hmm. underdogs. It is you know under six, minus 125. The problem is I tend to agree with that, and if that's the case, I'm still paying through the nose. Oh. What? You're telling me Boston's a favorite here? Yeah, I know. I kind of like Nashville, but I don't really think this game's okay. gonna have ten yeah. goals. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I go from a betting yeah, perspective, so. I like Nashville plus money. From the perspective yeah. of, oh, by the way, use promo code uh, 
DHPN. Uh, DFS perspective, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I want to actually stack into this game. There you go. I am quite literally placing the bet right now because that is truly egregious. I mean, just tell me you have not paid any attention to the NHL without telling me you have not paid any attention to the NHL. Um, <laughs> yeah. Calling all sports uh, books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they don't even know what hockey is i think uh it's, like, it's the only they play there <laughs> all right i'm gonna, um, I'm gonna bet it too you convinced me okay thank you um also- yeah so what else charlie mcavoy 5400 the price continues to slide yeah. i guess that's okay um but yeah yossi forsberg have been dominant um and yeah, uh, Cody Glass, sure. If you want to go there, you're really just trying to catch falling knives, I think, when you play these uh, fifth man on the Nashville power play because they have a role. I mean, Mike Viss and O'Reilly are not going to shoot. Um, and, you know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of dicey to me uh, to bet on any one individual. So I think really only in Forsberg UFC stacks am I interested in sort of trying to stat, take a stab at, you know, a berry or a glass or whoever is the guy of the day on the top power play, which we might get news, we might not. It's the constant Nashville quandary. So uh, anything else here you want to call out? Nope, nope. I think we covered that game well, and we'll get to the next spot that Wonderful. I think is interesting. Anaheim goes to the Calgary Flames. Um, this is a six over under mm-hmm. minus 120, so very similar to the, that Ottawa game. Um Minus 230 for the Flames. So that gives them a pretty decent implied team total. I have to uh, like think that the, there's some level of chalk here. I don't, again, w- a problem with the Flames, every time we want to stack them, what do you stack? Huh. You sit down, you, you take some time, you think, and you say, I have no freaking idea. Last game, <laughs> it was all power play driven. And that top power play was Uyghur on the top unit and not Miramanov or Rasmus Anderson with Huberto, Sharon Govich. Kadri and Kuzmenko, um, but they scored three of their four goals against LA on the power play. So again, I, I want to stack through that. The lines were also completely put in the blender. They actually listened to the podcast and said, wait, did DJ say play Kadri with Kuzmenko? Let's try it. And it worked. Um, although Pospa still scored the goal. That was the only five on five goal with that line. Um, I yeah. do like that. And then part of me wants to go to that Kadri Kuzmenko Uyghur situation and just say, Screw it. Like these are the guys that are good at, I think have the upside and Kuzmenko makes it very affordable. He's not a good rate shooter, but the rates have been better and he definitely is a goal scorer. So I think that's my favorite here. Um, and Uyghur is 6,400, which is pretty astronomic, but he obviously carries, I, I think upside yeah, worthy of, of consideration here. To play it. It is absolutely deserved. The price tag on Uyghur. Um, he's a blocks machine He's an offensive weapon as well. I mean, we know long, long sample of him being willing to shoot the puck. Um, so I have no problem with Mackenzie Weger. I have a little bit of problem if Calgary is actually going to be chalky here. Like um, if, if I can play a 10 yeah. to 15 man contest and I'm the only person with Kadri and, you know, Kuzmenko and Weger, that's fine. But as soon as you tell me, okay, well, actually two other people might have that. Like, that's where I start to go. Is this really, you know, the, the sort of place, the stack I think it is. Um, so that worries me a little bit. Yeah. I will say Sharon Govich, Zari, and uh, Coronado is very, very cheap uh, relative to like the Kadri Kuzmenko. It's, it's, a, it's a, you know, a few thousand cheaper, honestly, which is not nothing. It's not everything again. There's not a ton to really punt on the slate for. Uh, but if you want to play like a Roman Yossi and, you know, uh, Uyghur on defense, maybe that's how you do it. You play, you know, these cheaper uh, secondary pieces and Zari and Coronado, who do get a schmeckle of power play time. You know, it's very clearly the power play one um, at the current moment. But without Manjapani, these other lines will actually get some decent run. So I'm not that worried about. Um, you know, basically any stack here and then just LOL Blake Coleman 5.9k. Like, yeah, no, yeah. no, no thanks. So just don't play Huberto, yeah. don't play Coleman. And that's a very good uh summary. Anaheim. Yeah, solved it. Mm-hmm. They play. Anaheim's well. kidding. Gonna be <laughs> yeah, it's again, it's very disappointing that they're this cheap in the slate where they're not really necessary. 
but like I don't know. McTavish is dead. He's done nothing forever. And yep. just, I'm sick of it. But um Zegris kind of looked good last game. Um, you know, zip zip the puck around. Their power play looked like it was functional for the first time in ever. Um mm-hmm. and I gotta tell you, well, they, if they, Minchikov misses oh, go ahead. No, they actually played an actual power play one. They played Zegris, Terry, McTavish, Zellberger, and Carlson, and it 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 worked. I it just again like these coaches are so unbelievably stupid. They're like, we can't score a power play goal. What's wrong? Uh, I don't know. We have Silverberg, London, Strum, sure, Glue, or however you say his name, and then Brett Leeson with Terry. It's like, brother in Christ, you're playing bad players. Like, what do you think is gonna happen? Yeah. Like, I um, shouldn't be on a team's first power play. I'm not that good. It's so frustrating. It's just like it. Okay, go on, continue. Yeah. Um, so if Minchikov misses, Minchikov has been eating into Zellweger's power play time because Fowler's apparently just the number one guy there for some reason. Um, but Zellweger finally had a freaking game where it looked like he was actually taking control of the play. Um, he unfortunately didn't get either of the bonuses, but four plus two, he scored a goal. Um, like it really did look like he was sort of trusting his offensive instincts more, which, you know, again, who am I to say anything about that sort of stuff? But I feel like I watch enough and I've seen enough of these uh, guys come through that, like, I really do think it might be Zellweger time for the last few games here. And I'm willing to take a stab at it here if Minchikov misses again. Um, if Minchikov plays, I'll probably just sit back and watch uh, Zellweger. Um, but, you know, we've talked in the past about how Zellweger profiles extraordinarily well from a fantasy perspective, just given his proclivity to shoot in juniors um, and the offensive pedigree that he has um in general so 3k for that is really interesting given he's paired with cam fowler and plays you know actual top line minutes uh with the power play role so that's all i have to say on this game you ready for the last game yeah yeah and and again i think like the largest point there though is just like you could just play like two guys in anaheim you don't need to go overboard like if you need the savings and you decide on anaheim it's okay to just play like zelberger zegras you don't need to go and add Agreed. a third guy in like McTavish. So yeah, we can move on. Final game is our lowest total uh, tied, as I mentioned before. It is a five and a half minus 120 on the over. Vancouver at Vegas minus 135 for the home Golden Knights. Um, so yeah, it's not yeah. the best matchup for either team as expected. I uh, will once again to reiterate, I'm not playing Vancouver because I'm just not stacking against Vegas, especially when they're fully healthy on the point. I think that their defense is the best in the league. Um, and I just have no reason to play guys that are, while maybe there's a couple savings here, nothing that really stands out as an extreme value other than Pedersen, who continues to be just a little bit confusingly cheap. Um, but yeah, not here. Yeah, this game is pretty much a write-off for me. I I, I can't imagine playing into this game whatsoever. Um, the prices all feel a little bit high, like... Yeah, uh, it's just, it's probably going to be an intense game. It's going to be an interesting game to watch, but I do not believe that there's any reason to uh, stack, you know, 7K plus guys in this sort of matchup where both teams have been pretty good defensively. Um, and Vancouver in particular is really slowing down the pace of play. Um, just, yeah, not not overly interested whatsoever here. Perfect. Me neither. I think it's yeah. I mean, I like one off Petrangelo. Yeah. yeah, Petrangelo is too cheap at fifty two hundred. You know, coming off a long absence, that certainly makes sense as to why he's this cheap. Um, but this is a guy who we normally get for six k, if not more. Going to play twenty five minutes. You know, easy blocks bonus, shots bonus type upside with the possible point as well. Just you know, uh, Mackenzie Weger without the power to play one job, and yeah, a thousand cheaper is basically what you're getting from Petrangelo. 100% agree. Okay. All right. Top stacks, guaranteed goals. Top stacks, guaranteed goals. Um, I'll let you, you go first. Let's see. The number one stack, you know, I will do Yossi Forsberg. Just, just take it wow. off. Um, I, I just don't understand. If, if that truly is, if this slate closes and Nashville is a plus money underdog to Boston, they are not going to be as highly owned as they should. Um, that everything in Nashville runs through those two guys. They're very expensive, but there are so many ways to fit it in. You're not sacrificing nearly anything to make them work. 
like yeah this slate feels like an easy two 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 type stacking slate if you really want to um or you can try and mix in a ryan o'reilly or a cody glass or maybe even to go back to tyson berry on the power play like there's just you know many ways you can uh, skin this cat in this game all right um i will do the jack hughes holds luke hughes obviously we, we mentioned that you could throw in uh what's his freaking name um Howla with that as well and, and in reality anyone on the devils really like if you're playing the hughes brothers i don't see a reason why you couldn't play brat Timo, or he if you have that center spot open um so yeah i'll just stick with the the main three though hughes hughes holds okay um i do like that as well so let's see last stack um let's do dylan strom Ovi and John Carlson. Um, like I, I mentioned, I think Strom Ovi is the two guys I definitely want. Um, Carlson's good, but not crazy about a 6,300 price tag. Do you have a final stack ready for us? Yeah, I'm sticking with Kadri Guzmanko Uyghur. I, I think there's just all the upside in the world. And I almost feel like I'd be a fraud if I didn't, because I'm like, if only they put Kadri with Guzmanko, I think that's the perfect pair. <laughs> and then they do it and it works. And I'm like, Hmm, like I think I have to go back to the well. Just hope that Anaheim actually is competent enough, like we're saying, to put some pressure on them and get Weger that blocks bonus. So, you know, Weger gets two points in the bonus, and I'm sitting ultra pretty, I think, uh, in this spot. So I like it. Okay, I dig that. Um, guarantee goals. Spend eleven thousand and uh, get four goal scores. You know, handed right to you on this Tuesday slate. Uh, do you want to go first? Or do you want yeah, last one? time you go first. Last time we were two for two, and we picked high end guys and punts, and both of our punts hit in Zucker uh, immediately twice, and Drew O'Connor, and then Reinhardt and Bedard both failed. So that is yeah, it was very funny. Um, you can get wait. You said you go first, or did you say me go first? Yeah, I didn't yeah, I will go first. Um, I will take Brock Nelson, six K Brock Nelson. Um, there's really not much in the profile or underlyings that points to this being a fabulous play, but he's not scored in 10 games. They're against Chicago. 6K Brock. I can fit a 5K guy with that pretty easily, so let's do that. All right. Um, you, are you, you're not taking Paterka, right? I feel like that's, I'm, yeah, 4,300. No. I'll take, uh, I'll take Paterka. Damn, I, I was I was gonna set up to ask you what game number this is for Jeff Skinner, and take that as Don't. my second guaranteed goal. I can't. I, I am not allowed to say that word, unfortunately. Okay. My, my mouth um, will not do it today. I tried five times. It's just no, 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 no. Fair enough. All right. Um. So yeah, there are a lot of good sabers in that price range, which stinks. Um. But I can. I will persevere. Um. I will scroll down the board a tad. And uh, let's do, you know, Marco Rossi, 4,500. Um, I don't necessarily think that the Hartman absence helps him a ton, but it should lock him into, you know, 18 minutes of time on ice. I think, again, he plays alongside Kaprizov a bit more as a result of not having a NHL caliber any you know forward uh, to put on his wing. So give me Marco Rossi to take advantage of this Ottawa team that stinks and maybe some bottom line matchups that are not the top line, which is kind of good for Ottawa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bottom. Top, All right. Top bottom. You have... Um, yeah. I have a price range. Uh, boy. I think it's Verhage, right? I think I had enough for him. Well, let me double check. You do. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's Verhage. Okay. Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. Paterka, uh, Verhage, went, Nelson, Rossi. That went well. And despite me going on a 10-minute rant about whatever, as far as the playoffs and MSP Madness is concerned, I'm looking at the screen. 59-minute podcast, DJ. Round of applause for we, us. We like an eight-gamer. We we like an eight-gamer yeah. here on the morning. So, it gave us some time. So, yeah, I... Uh, but my, I think my problem is I'm just so jaded about anything the NHL could do, and I'm just so angry about everything they've done and not done that I'm just like, oh, a new idea they might try late. They'll mess it up. Um, but more so than like, I think it's a bad idea. But interesting conversation for sure. 
and people will be mad about it. And that's always fun to, to watch. So I'll, I'll see you on the, uh, the Zitter space. Yes, and if you want to be mad about things online, uh, there's a Discord for you to uh, hop into, the Morning Skate <laughs> Podcast Discord. Uh, we are mad in there all the time because the donkeys always win, um, and good plays are never rewarded. So uh, do join that. I'm on Twitter at Fake Moods, DJ's at DJ94. DM one of us, we can get you in there uh, to that Discord, and the podcast is at Morning Skate Pod. Um, I have a newsletter. I uh, leave... Uh, I'm not sure if I've mentioned it. Yeah, I must have mentioned it last week because we did a show Thursday. But I wrote up uh, the Fantasy Hockey World Championship. If you missed it, it should be in your email inbox if you're a subscriber. By the way, just past 100 subscribers, so thank you to everyone who signed up. Um, and by the way, that's a free free subscription. Um, but yeah, I, I wrote about that, posted it, I believe, Friday morning. So or Thursday morning? I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? Um, that that was fun to write and to relive and to sort of have as a vault for, you know, hopefully next time when I go or whatever. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed getting that little glimpse behind sort of what goes on at one of those live events that DraftKings hosts. Uh, anything else you want to say before we go? Uh, more underdog drafts. I was thinking about doing one Sunday and I ended up doing my taxes instead. So I will do one this week. Maybe there's just no good slate to take off, but maybe Wednesday night. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow night. I'm not too busy. Um, other than that, no, just final week of best puck. We're both pretty looking our wounds right now, but we'll see what happens. And um, yeah. yeah. Uh, shit. Uh, I'm, I'm looking pretty good. I mean, not live because I don't have Logan Thompson, but like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I got to say, uh, but yeah, let's, let's close out the show before this bleeds into a 75 minute one. Like it tends to, um, so yeah, big thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring this show as a part of the Hockey Podcast Network. So that'll do it from us. Stay tuned for more. So from Doug, from DJ, from myself, have a good slate, everybody, and we will see you.